Hey y'all, it's my fucking birthday. Literally, we are in studio right now, February 11th. I am turning 24 today, which is kind of wild. I've been having a lot of emotions about it simply because I am 24 and my mom had me when she was 23. So now I just feel like I'm ultra grown uh, because I could really, you know, if I was on the timeline of my mom, like be a mom right now and I'm really not ready for that. Anyways, uh, for my birthday, the biggest, most special thing about today is that Both my sisters are here with me. We are here in the DCP studios and we're going to be talking about something that I think we're all giggly and excited to talk about, which is the first time we each had sex. Um, And, you know, I want to throw a disclaimer out there that we are always when we get together super brutally honest and we're going to tell it like it is, tell our stories. And so little content warning that we'll probably be mentioning things that weren't consensual sexual experiences that didn't leave us feeling so great. Uh, Also content warning about just awkward first time sex stories and having to tell our mom about it. Um, And yeah, I think we're just going to kind of get into it. And I think the other thing we'll really be touching on is something that we've been talking a lot about on social media, if you've found us there, which is the fact that virginity is a social construct and has really been constructed by this misogynistic patriarchal world to uphold this idea that women should be quote unquote pure for like the use of man and judging a woman's worth based off of how much they is quote unquote been used by men. So we don't agree with that. But at the same time, we recognize that we grew up with a lot of societal pressure on knowing, planning for the first time we have sex as the like when we lose our virginity, right? Um, so yeah, uh, welcome a man, Issa. Hi. Thank you. Okay, so um, let's just go around first and say like, the first time you consider, like, what is your first time you consider? How old were you? Oh, fuck. I oh. was 17, I think. Yeah, 17. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I and was. I, I lost it around the same time as Miss. And that was Amaya Miss speaking. Who, who did <laughs> and no, no, no. I. So, okay, this is actually, I'm a little nervous about this topic. I'm giggly, but I'm a little nervous just because. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I. Because there's this whole, yeah, just as you said, there's this whole misogynistic aspect of losing your virginity. I mean, even the word losing, you don't, yeah. it's not, you don't lose something. Major ne- negative you connotation. You know, ma- like such negative connotation. It's like this idea that a man takes something from you when he has sex mm-hmm. with you. So for me, looking back on my years, I would consider my first time around 15. I would consider my first time 16. And I'll start us off on sharing story, my story, Mm -hmm. and then we can all go around and maybe share a little snippet. I think the full details for me, as I'm comfortable sharing, is that before I, my like quote unquote first time that I would consider, the first time a penis penetrated my vagina, it was non-consensual and rather violent. And so for me, like, I think I had a lot of shame around my quote unquote first time, something I would never ever get again, being something that was really negative, right? Because I think growing up with High School Musical and you know, we never see Vanessa and Troy hooking up that way, but you know, you have it in your mind. We presume and you kind of have this idea of candles and it's really special. And that was not my, the first time a penis went inside. It was very much like, you know, forced and violent and painful. And so when I think about like my first time, one of the ways I like coped with that shame and I think fear was, oh, that's not my first time. I'm going to, I'm not considering that my first time. And my real first time was with my high school boyfriend who I dated for many years and who absolutely broke my heart many years later. And I don't know if you guys know this, but our the first time we had sex was after watching the Titanic. So oh my yeah, God. so we watched the Titanic. It was like three hours. Yeah, and then in the credits, as the credits are rolling, I forget what song was playing. It honestly might be Is instrumental. It yeah, on. it honestly might be instrumental. You know, my I've heart will go on. With the Minions movie playing in the background, so like I actually don't think that's that bad. Okay, so okay, so that was that situation, and I think that one, I was really nervous the whole time. It was just like missionary, just like super nervous. That's sweet. And I also like, I think I'm drier. And so it was really like chafy. Like it was very dry, not painful. Mm -hmm. And it was just awkward. And I remember the morning after it just felt so weird. I didn't sleep over. I had like snuck into that house 
it was so weird. And then we had like texted each other and been like, oh, we rushed it. Let's not hook up at all for th- like a month. I actually and think take I it remember back. this. Are I you remember still talking to you about this. Like typically a dry person. person? I think I'm drier than you. <laughs> Because, no, I, I thought I was just a quote-unquote dry person for years. Oh, me and Issa have talked about but this But that so was much. just because wrong I wasn't person. into it. Yeah. I wasn't turned on. It was the wrong person. <laughs> no, I for me. I didn't want to be there, but, like. For me, I actually realized. So, I think it's because I have bigger uh, vagina lips. So, no, seriously. So, like, it's not to immediately clear, though, wet. Being dry does not mean, like, and wet does not necessarily yeah, true. relate yeah. to no, how yeah. much you want But anything. for me, it's that. It like you have to puncture the surface and then it's gushy, but you like <laughs> you actually you have to get into the surface. But I'll say like that was my first time with a dude, and then I honestly didn't have you know I- intimacy in that way with a woman until many years later. But yeah, that was my first time. It was just awkward and dry. I have a question. Do you consider? Well, I don't like saying losing your virginity, but do you consider having like two different? loss of virginity experiences with a woman and a man or are you like i lost my virginity with this person well i think that by the time i had hooked up with a woman i was done thinking virginity is something i like check mark off the box but i remember the first time i had sex with my high school sweetheart it was like oh yep i did it like i am no longer a virgin i wasn't really in vagina sex yeah oh yeah a male was more i think there (laughs) but i also think that a lot of the concept of or the problematicness of the concept of losing your virginity is also because it's so heteronormative, right? Yeah. Like it's considered you quote unquote lose your virginity when a penis goes into the vagina. Yeah. And so, but I do think that it was a completely new experience, right? I did feel like this is new experience. It feels, it felt like a really big deal and like really healing yeah. for me. But yeah, I don't think I ever measured it against like losing my virginity or something. Yeah. What about you, Amea? Like when I was You're, deflowered. If, yeah, deflowered, whatever <laughs> you want to call it. Yeah. Um, I mean, similarly, unfortunately, my first time with penis and vagina sex, I it's funny because I actually worked for Planned Parenthood um, for a lot of high school and I was traveling, skipping school, traveling around the Portland area, teaching sex ed and talking about sex and virginity. Um, and you always had I was bags of condoms. And I, I constantly, I had a fanny pack, which I still carry on to this day, always filled with like 20, 30 plus condoms, lube, vanilla, cherry flavored, um, dental dams, glow in the dark condoms, ribbed condoms, like I got you covered. And I did not have penis and vagina sex, if we're being specific, until I was 17. And it was a really negative experience. Yeah, Issa is making some like, shock <laughs> faces right shocked. now. Um, I think people are really shocked too, because even a lot of sex educators, we joke, I at Planned Parenthood meetings, we were always like the freakiest ones. Cause in our heads we're like, oh, we knew the rules, but like we knew the rules. So, you know, but I was, I was pretty embarrassed a little bit, I think. And so my um, intention with having sex for the first time when I was 17, which I, I'm, I don't have regrets about, but I think in retrospect, I would have done it differently, was very much about catching up. And mm-hmm. I think half of that was societal pressure and because I definitely felt like I was the only one at my school. Like, this is not true, right? But I was like, felt like the only one at my school or in, in my friend groups who um, still had never had sex with anyone. Um, and and it will penetrative sex. And I think that right off the bat, at least for me personally, I defined virginity in many different ways, right? Like, I think oral sex is sex. Um, I think that there's penetrative sex. I think that there's vagina, vagina, penis and vagina, right? There's so many different combinations. Never had a three-way still. That's another form of virginity, right? Um, But I kind of just, I think I was in a really depressed state and I had someone take advantage of me. And um, I remember being really embarrassed and I did not tell anyone for over a week. And I took a shower after and I didn't talk to this person, this boy for like throughout school. I would avoid him throughout school. Um, And it was really negative experience. And and I do not count that as my first time. And to this day, you know, I'm saying it on the podcast, but I don't like sharing. You know, I don't even talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember like being at graduation. You know who this is. I remember being mm-hmm. at my high school graduation. And at the time, my high school sweetheart, who I had a really amazing long term relationship with, was like at graduation. And the boy who I quote unquote technically lost my virginity to, like walks across the stage. And Issa goes like, oh, that's, you know, you know, a man that boy right and he had no idea because I'd never told him and we'd been dating for like eight months at that point um I'm getting convoluted anyway the story I tell though when people say like oh um 
when did you lose your virginity to me is really comical, but also a little bit sad in some ways, because in my head, I knew that I had this really negative experience that I wanted to rewrite, right? So much of my life, and I think my philosophy towards life is being able to rewrite my own story and redefine my own story, right? Um, so I texted this really cute six foot four boy <laughs> that I'd had like I was my first boyfriend in eighth grade he was my long-term like not middle school bay middle school bay like first boyfriend like crush on him since I was in sixth grade like we were skipping school together in middle school and he went to a different school and we would just text you know flirty sometimes and I randomly snapchatted him like a photo of my face with just the three letters dtf <laughs> And he messaged me back and was like, oh, really? And literally he like came over like the next day and I like didn't sneak him into the house. Like I was lucky as the middle child to have like complete trust with my mom, right? Like my mom was just kind of like, oh, Maya's like the good child. I, was, I don't like, know a if snitch. it's trust or like or she didn't care. <laughs> I think at this point it wasn't that you were very sexual, but it was very, you had a That's lot true. of male friends yes, who were completely platonic yeah. and there was never like, I think Issa and me were obviously Mom always flirty. Was also like working on me at the time. That's yeah, that's yeah. So I was not, I was quite unsupervised throughout my, I, I very, very much was like always unsupervised. I was coming home at like 10, 11 p.m. anyway. But you were the presumed day. innocent, like very yeah, innocent one. Yeah. I was yeah. presumed innocent. And what we'll later get to is like when I, I was actually really upset because when I finally told my mom that I lost my virginity, she had virtually zero reaction and was like, it seems about right. Like it was almost like about time. Amanda. About time. And I think, she, and I was like, mom, like what the shit is, like this is a big deal. And she was like, but you're prepared. Like you teach sex ed. And so that's where it's like, you know, it's been a while, but anyway, it was such a horrible experience. He had had like a skiing accident like the week before, so he like couldn't move and like he he didn't know it was my first time, so he just like was laying on my bed and I was like, I didn't really know what to do, but I really wanted to like get this over with, right? Yep. Um, I like climbed on top of him, I, like in Lady Bird, when Lady Bird loses her virginity by climbing on top of T Timothy Chalamet, right? And it's like 10 seconds and then he's like, ah, and then she's like, that's it and slaps him. Like when I watched that in the movie theater, I never I was watched like, that. Okay, I was like that. Oh my god, I feel seen because it was over so quickly, um, yeah. and I was like, this is a very appropriate seventeen-year-old DTF text sexual experience. Um, and I did not tell. And like, but like to me, that was good, you know, because um, this boy who, if you're out there, like, actually still love you, <laughs> like just like really good. <laughs> no, like not like actually, but like I have a lot of like appreciation because he never this like boy that I. I choose to identify with as least my first year of virginity like it was always good vibes like it was never super deep but like ever since we were younger it was always good vibes yeah um great memories <laughs> okay so that um, brings us to yeah, it's fucking time. hilarious this is literally same time like yeah. same year like maybe within a couple months I feel like um so I have always been really conflicted about this whole concept of my virginity just because I technically, and we've already explained what technically means, I've technically lost my virginity to my boyfriend, to my, 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 my early high school boyfriend. And so I had everyone around me telling me, like, oh, he's your boyfriend. Like, of course you guys are doing that stuff, of course. But in reality, I was 14. And it's interesting to hear you say that you lost yours feeling like you had to catch up. I was being told, and might I remind you, that like this boy didn't really let me have friends, wouldn't let me see anyone else, consistently told me that like we had to do these things because everyone else was doing them. But And since I didn't really have many girlfriends, like close girlfriends at the time, I didn't know that that wasn't true. Mm -hmm. So at 14, yeah. I had all these, like, I had this this guy telling me, that we had to do all of these things because like I had to catch up I was 14 and so like looking back it's really angering and it's disgusting because afterwards I just remember feeling completely violated like my body has never felt more not mine than after losing my virginity and and then uh, coming back to like the like, name of the episode like I was thought it was gonna be like candles and, and like yeah the Titanic playing in the background but no mine was just like completely like are we doing it now now yeah. like every time we hung out it was like is it time like that's something okay anyways 
that happened. So then after that relationship, which lasted about a year after that, um, which got progressively worse, by the way, progressively worse. I was just in a really bad spot. And mom was an amazing mom who just completely 180, like was all supported, like supported me through my therapy, through my work, through my self healing. And so I kind of just like had a time frame where I didn't have sex for a while. And I just like reclaimed my virginity. And, um, that was after the relationship though. And that was after the relationship. Um, but technically, so not technically, emotionally, I consider my first time with my childhood best friend and lifetime crush, like moments, like the she first time I saw him. Are you crying? <laughs> like I, I, I actually think him. she's tearing up right now. Like the first time I saw him. When you were five. When I was five. <laughs> yes, yes. No, and I say this with my whole heart. Like the first time that I saw this boy, <gasps> In like kindergarten, she's actually tearing up. Oh, he's so oh, crying. she's crying! What the fuck? <gasps> oh. Anyway, <laughs> we love you. We love you. While you catch your breath, I'll also <laughs> just put a disclaimer here that this five-year-old crush. Um, was the little brother of my eighth grade boyfriend who no, was my not, first kiss. Not only that, this is the little brother of my Your best, best friend. friend. Who is still one of my best friends. Who we used to have. Okay, okay too sorry, too many details. details. So, no, no, no. Okay, so I remember I had know, years out there, we of trying to rebuild my life, like rebuild my friendships, rebuild my groups. And my so- maybe sophomore year, um, sophomore year after like some homecoming dance, I remember all of our friends, we were meeting up at this boy's house. And this was a house that we grew up hanging out at. Like us three, us three yeah. sisters, because you were dating, you were best friends. <laughs> <laughs> everyone was, everyone so who knows this is going to be like, oh, we're okay, not dropping we, names. No, this is, we're, we're not, not dropping drop names, names, but yeah. But I just remember I have like, ugh, kindergarten, we would like, touch pinkies on like <laughs> while we would draw like second grade um wait can we just pause grade, and acknowledge like, touched like, pinkies while we draw like, you know, <laughs> or in the movies when you're like we would go to movies with friends and you know you're just like your elbows or nudge have a little bit sibling movie night in their basement <laughs> Um, or or under under our second grade like reading table we'd like touch toes a little bit so this might I remind you this was like 15 years of just like flirting tension on each other mm-hmm. I remember fifth grade after school it was a ritual that we'd go outside and we'd play mercy where you like t- where you like hold hands and you like try to push each other's hands where you, back. No, it's not it, it's it's when you try to cause the other pain yeah, no, by no. Bringing but <laughs> we it's when you like you like do it until yeah. you say mercy but honestly like we had so much sexual tension as 12 year olds <laughs> that we would literally just be no, like playing mercy for hours at, okay anyways hours software <laughs> okay not hours but sophomore go again year. Go, 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 go again sophomore year i remember i was still kind of rebuilding myself and and we were in a in our like the movie basement where we grew up like we mm-hmm. grew up watching playing movies wall with ball. these people playing wall ball watching so futurama i just remember we kind of like looked at each other and it was like yeah <laughs> Yeah. And so I remember we like went up to his room and it was like twilight. It was purple. Like the room was purple. The sun was just coming up. He did get great sunlight in that room. Oh, and it was his first time, by the way. And it was his first time. So I was, I was, I was more experienced than him, which, which helped. Um, And I don't know. We just kind of like guided each other through it. Like me emotionally, him physically. So it was a lot healing. It was healing for me. So, so that's what I consider my first time. But it did not turn into anything. It was very much like a casual one time. It was very much like a casual thing. And then, and then. Did it ever happen again? Mm. Yeah. Yeah? Oh, no, no, no. Almost. 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 Okay. Almost. So it was like a one time. Almost. But then we, we realized that our friendship was too special. Like, we didn't, yeah. didn't want to risk anything. Um, and and I was still. There's no I was way still, that there's not real, like, love there just because yeah. of how much we oh, no, close no, up totally our families are. Yeah. Story, but no, I, I wouldn't. No, We're I all so close. Oh, and his older brother was my last casual hookup, regular casual hookup before my current relationship. Yeah. So I would yeah. not. <laughs> 
<laughs> I would not like date this boy. I didn't date this boy because like that friendship is just too special to me mm-hmm. and to yeah. like, like our family. And um, but yeah, it was a very like healing <laughs> event for me. I think that what's really powerful about what you shared, Isa, is you know, again, the first time that it was imposed on you. And it wasn't until you had that time of healing, therapy, also reporting your first shitty boyfriend, reporting to the school and authorities. Like there was a lot of time and work that went into, I think you doing your healing before you could have that more emotional experience. Oh yeah. But I also think that what's, I think what you and I have talked a lot about is once you even have a positive experience, right? Like even with my high school boyfriend, eventually we got to a cadence where we were having, you know, consensual, sweet, darling, high school sweetheart sex. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it wasn't like I was climaxing, you know, but it was like something that felt really fun and good to me and explorative. But I think that at the same time, I feel like you and I talk a lot about this because of the trauma we've been through and maybe the first ever penetrative experience we had not being so consensual, Mm -hmm. it was kind of a theme, even going back out and dating, like saying, being able to say no to guys and sexual advances. Like I definitely have always struggled with that. And to be honest, like, as you both know, it's been a really, really challenging uh, thing even in my current relationship, right? Because if I'm out and I'm in an event or something, or I'm having a one-on-one conversation with a guy, even though I'm with Henry, uh, if and I keep reiterating it's just getting that like attention for your body. Yeah. Just yeah. Growing up, us three we were trophy daughters. Like yeah. we were trophy daughters. We got dressed up. And the touched. only time that we really got attention was when we got you know dressed up. And it is extremely frustrating day to day and I think that the older I get the more open I mean Nadia paved the way for I think me and Issa both to start being more open about you know being victims of CSA and being survivors oh my god I guess I like don't even think I'm ready to talk about it but well this is a very new the, thing to, for you it's to so new for me to talk about and the older I get um and the more self-aware I get and the more healed I get the also more angry frustrated yeah. Um, and sometimes, what's that word when you feel super hopeless, like at a loss, like I get, um, realizing how much just connects back to our father, our biological father, uh, and the saying no, not even with men, but across the board in career spaces and whatnot, is really frustrating. Yeah, I mean, I think like daddy issues are yeah. so real. Yeah, <laughs> but I also and think you that have to tell your partner. Yeah. Like, if you start, if I start dating or flirting with anyone, it starts getting a little serious. It's so frustrating to people. Like, fuck, I have to have this conversation where I say, like, by the way, like, I'm a victim of <laughs> survivor. I'm a survivor yeah. of CSA. And by the way, like, I've had really unconsensual experiences in my life. Well, which is something that I'm actually learning to grow out of. Like, when you enter a new relationship. You don't actually have to share that stuff. Issa does not share that. I I choose not, I try not to. I have with my current boyfriend, just because we're at a point where I feel comfortable doing that. And this is your like fourth time dating too, (laughs) with this person. (laughs) In terms of like dating a guy, I just, I don't, I believe in like, you know, you do your processing and it's important to have your support system. And if you do have that support system, I don't know. I would choose not to bring my, my like my past traumas into a new relationship. Um, I think it's dependent on the dynamic you have, though, yeah. and like depends on your person. And I think that knowing how much I love you two together right now, it makes sense. But also, and it's wait, appropriate. I, feel. I also feel like Issa, you say that, but then you also at, there comes a point in those relationships yeah. where you're like oh shit, I'm being triggered and exactly. I need to tell that's them. A, yeah, that's a big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aware I think what Amaya is getting into is Amaya walks into the room and is like. Uh, by the way, you know, and or that I'm joking, but you I know, don't do that. but like I'm saying, Issa is more of like delayed yeah. until she really yeah. has to, yeah, like until it, it starts. Come up no, like I'm like, let's talk about this and let's get it out of the way. Oh, like I'm processed, I but yeah, I know okay. you love to just put it out. Wait, there. I'm we're referring. Oh, we're referring I was like, what the fuck is she talking about? Oh, how my our mom found, found out. Oh, okay, wait, wait. I have to. I have to start this off. Okay, because oh we th- there's a lot of emotion about this. So when Issa first had her penetrative yeah. sexual experience, she was not on birth control, no. and 
I don't think you used protection. No. I was 14. You were 14. I really did know not know what, what was and I was I on. was a sex educator on my Okay, wait, well, hold on. Ass. But also even more so around sex educator tools okay, everywhere. It's not it's her <laughs> vagina. <laughs> But all that to say, I remember a man, I hear this and immediately alert, like fuck. we are so angry fuck. and not at you, no. but I think kind of at ourselves, like, I, tell you? I remember you I told, terrified. you were, told me, to tell someone. you told me because we were talking about boys and dating. Yeah. I think you also had your bruise. You had some sort of bruise on your head and we were both really skeptical. I had like a bruise on my, on my forearm. And yeah, you had bruises on her face and it wasn't hickeys. It was like physical bruises. It was like yellowed, purple, blue And I think bruises. a man and I were trying to kind of like, you know, just be casual. Like, let's find out what's happening with Issa. And suddenly you were like, oh, we had sex, but it was, it was great. And you could tell that we were nervous. And I think you kind of overcompensated like it was fine. And then it became, did you use protection? This is when we were in the car, right? I, no, I think I remember we were in our old room. And then all of a sudden, I think we were like, you have to tell mom, not because she needs to know you are having sex, but because you need to be on birth control. I, to be on I birth told control you guys so separately. Fast. No, yeah. we were doing yoga in our living room or something like I that. Think something. We were exercising, doing little cardio exercises. And then you told Amaya and Amaya talked to me about it. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, fine. Like I'll get birth control. Let's like, I'll the, do the, it. Let's the, figure the, it out. Communication was Isa told Nadia. Nadia is like, Isa needs fucking birth control. Let's mm -hmm. talk to Amea. Amea freaks out and then freaks out on Isa. And then flipped. <laughs> and then I out overreacted. I'm really sorry. Wait, but I then it, and then it gets no, crazy. And then so I remember we were all sitting in the living room, and this was about a week afterwards. And mom comes home from work at night, and I remember Amea's on one side, Nadia's on, on one side, and we were like, we were kind of whispering under our voices, and I thought we were gonna take care of this as sisters. <laughs> and I thought we were, might have, like, gone, I don't know, you were gonna get me birth control. So I was like, okay, guys, I'm like, mom's coming, mom's coming. And so then we're all sitting there, and I'm like, Nadia was just. We're at the Nadia dining table. Isa, Isa wanted to get birth control without talking to mom and yeah. without telling mom and anything. Amaya turns to her mom while mom's like, you know, putting her stuff away. Mom's chilling out. Mom's like starting to rewind from her day at work. And like, might I remind you, our mom was so busy at this time. Yeah. And so she was just like taking her coat off. And Amaya goes, I had penis vagina sex. So did Isa. <laughs> And literally, mom, that's exactly how it happened. That like is, nobody was saying word anything. Word. Mom was like relaxing, <laughs> and all of us were silence. So. And then some. Maya literally goes, "Penis and vagina sex." So did Isa. And I remember mom just like paused, sat down, silent, and started crying. Yeah. yeah. And she and and I think the context of this is mom was also at a point where we had gone through so much. Like this is yeah. right when we had moved back into our apartment. Like Less than a year after the court case, less than a year after I was yeah. released from Cartini. Court case, everything, like we were all so fragile. And I think mom was feeling like we were just getting back on our feet. And suddenly her 14 year old, her baby, her like smallest child is like having sex. And I think she just broke down, but also mom has this like Catholic Christian Well, I, I, I want to say that mom came back and a lot when she, so she, she, we'll talk about it. She left and then she came back and a lot of it was about the fact that she felt like she did, she also was angry at herself because she had like asked you so many times if you were having sex. Yeah. And you had said no. And you had and promised her no. no, 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 I'm not, I'm not. Because she said like, do you need birth control? And you had said like, no. I just remember... I've talked about this with mom a lot just because that was <laughs> that was a hard day. We've had to process it together. Um, I mean, you still say that's like one of the most traumatic days of your like life. one of the most traumatic so days of my life. <laughs> because I think for context, Amaya says that, mom starts crying, and then maybe for like 30 yeah. minutes. Immediately, she, so no, mom, no comment, gets up and leaves. No comment. Mom starts sobbing, and she's so angry. And she, I remember her impulse was to be like, I think upset at you, which was triggering for you. It was triggering for me, but also I've talked to mom and I think mom kind of began to learn what was going on between my boyfriend and I. Mom saw what was going on and she was really, really, she was, she was such a great mom. Like through the whole thing, no, she, was she was really trying to just make me see it as well. And in the situation that I was, it's really difficult to see yeah. what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so I think the news and of me yeah, he did take something from me. Losing my yeah. virginity that day was just like really heartbreaking. And I totally understand why now reflecting on yeah. it. Um, and so I also considering like the situation of our family at the time, and we were all kind of just so trauma bonded by having to report our dad and, um, 
just what you guys had gone through. I feel like I also, it kind of like broke a connection that my mom and I had yeah. a little bit just because, yeah, like we're, we're all so tight with our mom and me not being the first person to tell her that I had lost my virginity and that I actually did need help was just, you know, something that was, has been really difficult to rebuild between yeah. us. I think it, I mean, it also was a big wedge between the relationship with both of you. Yeah. And I think something that progressively was worked on too. It yeah. was progressive. We've had to work on that. I mean, I think a lot of it was, it was just a, like overall the, like sex has in our family has always been an open conversation in terms of like what Amaya said earlier, I didn't even tell anybody for so long for like a week, right? <laughs> like in some families, like they never talk about it, right? Like uh, most of my friends, they've never talked about it with their yeah. family. We talk about everything. Everything. So like the fact that- if you date one I of us, you date all of us. You date all of us. You date all of us. Okay. <laughs> well, I also Ethan's think- like, I've withholded information. <laughs> because I told my mom about my first kiss, my first slow dance, yeah. my first date. And I think that I didn't tell her about this because I knew that it was not right that yeah. it was not consensual. I knew mom would have some sort of reaction because I was having that internal reaction myself. But you're also like in denial about it even happening. Yeah. And right? so I also, it happened so fast that I was like, did that happen? Yeah. Like, what, what? <laughs> so I think I just had a slower reaction than like you had to me losing my virginity. Well, and I, so also, I also knew this kid for so long mm -hmm. and I hated him so much. So it was like that reaction of like, I mean, I'm not making excuses because I think I definitely could have gone about it in a different way, but I remember being just so angry and frustrated and like what, like, right? Like you can't, you cannot get someone to leave a relationship at a certain level, right? Like you need, they, that is their prerogative. Um, and sometimes even asking someone to leave someone can make it even worse. Um, or dig them even deeper. So I think I remember just being like, what can I control? What can I control? Which I shouldn't have thought of like that. Yeah. yeah. But I think like our relationship as sisters now, I mean, that was a really difficult, a difficult day. And I think it definitely broke some ties between me and the two of you just because I like confided in you. Um, but then, I mean, now reflecting on it, I'm like, thank God, I yeah. love the pill. <laughs> and so I'm just like so thankful at the same time that I have sisters that I could go to and talk to. And, and even now, I think through that event, it brought us closer, like, you know, three steps forward, five steps back or whatever it yeah. is. Like, yeah. um, it did open our conversations about sex and about the things that we do intimately with our partners um and so now that we're kind of growing up and being older we're able to have like deeper conversations yeah. um, i'll say i think that um kind of tying it back to you know what you asked earlier isa around how it was different hooking up with women i remember the first time i like had sex with a woman uh, it was one of the first times I felt like I really understood what consent was because in all my experiences with a uh, cis dude, it was always a very clear power dynamic where I felt like they were initiating and they were also physically bigger than me, like taller than me, stronger than me physically. So one, I either didn't have that physical control or two, like um, they were the ones initiating to ask who should have asked for permission, right? Not a lot of them did, but like they should have. But when I actually, my first experience hooking up with a woman, like privately, intimately, I was the bigger one. Like I was the one who was taller and like stronger and honestly more masculine too. Is that your type? Um, I like don't really have a type at all oh, yeah, actually yeah, in that yeah, yeah. situation, like especially with non-cis dudes like well, I think that cis guys I am kind of like I want them to be taller but I don't otherwise but I remember I was the taller one and I had I was really nervous but I had to ask permission first like that was I felt like that was my duty and I remember the first time you know hooking up and being like is this okay can I do this and it just felt so much more liberating and I was nervous but then after I asked for permission and they were like yes or like let's try this and I felt like so out of it, it like, sounds like that was one of the very rare and probably one of the first experiences sexually where you you were in control yeah i think it was where i was in control but it was also like i was just physically bigger like it was yeah. just different like yeah, i was physically the more dominant one and it's such a physical intimate thing but i remember after that experience being like 
wow, it's so easy to ask for permission. And it's like a half a second thing. Why doesn't everybody do that? And I actually think it changed my perspective on going back into hookup culture. And, you know, you guys know I'm not a casual sex person, but I think it did change my perspective because then when I was hooking up with people who were cis men, when they didn't ask for permission or they weren't as respectful, it was an immediate like the bar that it is so easy to ask for permission. Like how the, how do you have the audacity not to right? And I actually did feel like that was a really, really big eye opener for me and something that like I think about a lot today. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I don't know, it's just like, I think through each of our stories, it's definitely been, it, I mean, each of us so clearly prove that virginity is a social construct, right? Like even this concept of does it penetrate or not? It's like, what penetrates a finger? You know, like yeah. I think that there's so much to unpack there. A tampon? A tampon? <laughs> well, and one of the most asked questions I get is, um, a hex uh, do you not, <laughs> is, is do you lose your virginity if you have a tamp if you use a tampon, right? Yeah. Which is the answer is no virginity is a social construct. Um, but yeah, I think we can talk about this forever, but maybe I would love to wrap up just with like, let's just say a little message to all the young, specifically women survivors out there who maybe haven't had a sexual experience, right? Like what would your word of advice be? What would you, what do you wish like someone would have told you? What I've been thinking throughout this entire podcast that I, I hope is, you know, PSA is you can get birth control from your doctor, from Planned Parenthood, you know, like without any sh insurance, you can figure out a way, work with Planned Parenthood, um, and you can talk to your primary care physician, um, even your pediatrician, and talk about birth control options with it being, um, and your parents don't have to know. And I think that that should be public information. And it's, we need to protect that right we too. We need to protect that right. But if you are thinking right now, holy fuck, I need birth control, and I don't want to be in a mess that Issa was in, like you can go get it. And DM a man if you have questions. You can DM me if you have questions. Issa, what about you? Um, I would say that your body is yours. Like, yes, we have all been in situations where it's difficult to protect ourselves. But in terms of my experience and my um, specifically with a partner that I once trusted and loved or thought I loved, you do not get to let someone convince you to let mm -hmm. them literally enter you. Like yep. your body is precious. Don't let anybody tell you that it's otherwise or don't let anybody claim it for themselves you know, if you can have that control, if you have that, control. If, you, if you have, you're in that situation, but just know that you have an army behind you of women who will stand by you. You are not alone. If you are in a relationship where you're feeling stuck, or if you're in a relationship where you're feeling like you have to give something up. Um, so yeah, DM me. You, if you need a you little are, pep talk. You are not alone. There are hotlines. There are youth lines. And no matter what happens, your body will always be precious. I, I think the thing that I would say is um, it's also just doing your own pleasure research on like what you like and that like sex is for you and not something you owe to anybody else, even if that's another partner, but even to society, like what Amaya was saying around feeling pressured to have those experiences. I think everybody has a different, different experience. I also think that for the first 20 years of my life, I thought of sex as performative. It was like, you do sex to be sexy. You do sex for them to like you, for them to not leave, you know? And a lot of that was written in my trauma, but also I think what I learned from media and, and porn, porn like, like all of that's so performative and so fake. Mm -hmm. And so I think that for me, like I'm still doing a lot of my own thinking about what I like and even kinks, like what, how, like I've never let myself explore any sort of kinks and I still don't know like what my kinks are or anything like that or like, even when I'm watching uh, television and I like, for example, I've been watching Succession and I hear public discourse on who the hot person is. I always feel like I'm attracted to the person nobody else is attracted to. And I always hide that. And I feel like that's something I'm working through now is even like really exploring what I like and why and like not feeling pressured to like things just because I feel like I should. And you do not need a man to orgasm. 
like yeah. explore <laughs> that, is that so huge. on yourself yeah, like explore so yourself mm-hmm. and just like take your time and just yeah, yeah you don't you don't need them. And if you want a little pep talk on self-pleasure, listen to our self-pleasure episode that I did with Amea where she taught me all about her masturbation techniques. So that's, def- that's also, by the way, one of the most listened to episodes that's of Tiger so far. Anyways, we've gone over time. But again, this is something I feel like we're always doing a lot of unpacking about. I feel like, Issa, you should really text your crush um, from fi- fi- being five years old. I know it's not a thing anymore, but like that's so special. And I'm excited for this to come out because I feel like you have to send him the link. It's just so sweet. Anyways, with that, thank you so much for listening. Again, sending my love to all of you. I think we just dedicate this to all our fellow like survivors. trauma CSA survivors out there because like we all deserve pleasure and it takes a lot of work and a lot of healing to get there after going through things like that. And yeah, you're not alone and like you'll get there and we wish you the most like incredible intimate uh, experiences if and so you choose to do that and want that so yeah uh, we'll see you next wednesday again thank you so much for tuning in wherever podcasts are streamed thank you to our dcp team for giving us the platform to rant about you know our sexual experiences and we will see you next wednesday